Wall Street cheers lower inflation. But a new risk has investors on edge. U.S. stocks have powered firmly higher from their late October lows this week, helped in part by fading inflation prospects that have triggered a pullback in Treasury bond yields while erasing bets on a final Fed rate hike over the coming months. Markets, in fact, are counting on the Fed to start cutting rates as early as next spring, with the CME Group's Fed watch indicating a nearly 50% chance of a quarter-point reduction at the Fed's May policy meeting, with more cuts to follow into the back half of 2024. Walmart, WMT, Get Free Report CEO Doug McMillan added to the tepid inflation outlook, telling investors Thursday that the world's biggest retailer is ready for a period of deflation in the U.S. over the coming months, and plans to reduce grocery and other staples items prices into the holiday season in order to offset that impact. But taming inflation comes with a cost, and investors are starting to see that revealed in the first signs of real weakness in the job market. The Labor Department reported Thursday that new applications for unemployment benefits jumped by 13,000 to 231,000 last week, the highest in nearly two years, and corporate layoffs are starting to accelerate. Walmart's deflation warning might also portend some cost-cutting by others in the retail sector, and possibly beyond, in order to protect profit margins in advance of slowing revenue growth. Labor costs always are in the firing line when firms find themselves under pressure from weakening sales, or gross margin compression, or both, said Ian Shepherdson O. Pantheon Macroeconomics. Any significant rise in layoffs will translate into slower payroll gains and rising unemployment. Though we still think that a major rollover in the labor market is unlikely, he added. Inflation slayed, but growth concerns emerge. So, while Treasury bond yields are now firmly south of the multi-year peaks they reached last month as a result of the tamed inflation landscape, the extended moves lower may now reflect a broader concern for U.S. growth prospects as opposed to previous worries about elevated consumer price pressures. We do think there are signs of softness for the economy in the coming months, but not something that is extremely damaging or leads to recession or a hard landing, said BMO Wealth Management's Chief Investment Officer Young Yu Ma. A bit of softness played out in relation to softening inflation pressures or a labor market that remained healthy, but still didn't show too many signs of tightness. That said, the Atlanta Fed's GDP now forecasting tool suggests the economy is growing at a 2.2% clip. That's down from the searing 4.9% pace recorded over the three months ending in October but still a long way from suggesting the U.S. is facing near-term recession threats. Big declines in global oil prices, which are down around 20% from their late summer peaks, are likely to deliver the lowest back-to-back -back CPI prints since the pandemic this month according to Bank of America data, while providing a notable consumer spending tailwind in the form of lower U.S. gasoline prices. Can stocks find end-of-year tailwind? Chris Larkin, Managing Director for Trading and Investing at E-Trade from Morgan Stanley, thinks it's still too early for the Fed to declare victory on inflation and notes that while rate cuts are still far off into the future, more data like this will tamp down lingering concerns about an additional hike.